Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. Honeycomb have finally released the drivers for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Well, they've released it for X-Plane 11, both PC and Mac. For prepared version 3, 4 and 5 and also for FSX. The update for Microsoft Flight Simulator is not out yet. It's going to be incorporated directly in the sim in a future update and hopefully we'll see that before the holidays. Today the focus is on X-Plane 11 for PC. We're going to see where do we get the drivers from, how do we install them, look at the configurator itself before jumping into the sim and seeing the new configuration options. From there, we're going to try it out in the Boeing 737 as well as the trusty Cessna 172. Well, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. To download the drivers, go to the main Honeycomb website and on the front page, go right down to the bottom and there you will see downloads. Click on that and it'll take you to the downloads page. I'll leave all links in the notes below. Once again, scroll down the page and you'll see the drivers as well as the note relating to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Click on the appropriate download now, depending on whether you're using a PC or a Mac. And the download will be in the form of a zip file. Honeycomb have not actually created this application, it's been done by Aerosoft based in Germany. Place a zip file in your chosen location and then unzip the file. Once unzipped, you'll be able to see that there is a setup.exe file. Click on that and the install application will start straight away. It's not a large program, so installation is quick and easy. Just follow the on-screen prompts. Accept the terms of the license agreement. In my case, it auto-detected the X-Plane directory and the installation starts. Once installation is completed, close the application and you'll have an icon on your desktop. There is a manual with the application in German and in English. To find it, you'll need to go to the plugin subdirectory in your X-Plane main install. You'll see a new plugin, AFC Bridge, which is the application itself, and a further subdirectory, Documents. Let's just say the documents are, well, they're concise. Open the application from your desktop and you'll be presented with a view similar to this. Holding down the left mouse button, you're able to rotate and manipulate your view so you can see all the button switches and dials and so on. Using the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. The items on the throttle quadrant that are highlighted are clickable. When you select an item, a menu will pop up showing you what actions are available for that particular switch or dial. The LED lights for the gear and for the annunciator panel are not selectable. There is a separate mode for LED selection and we'll cover that shortly. The controls configurator within X-Plane is probably the best in the business. It's intuitive and easy to use. So the question that may spring to mind is why do we need this configurator? X-Plane currently is not able to configure the LEDs on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. In addition, it is difficult, in fact I'm not even sure if it's possible, to do what I call conditional configurations. What I mean by that is the FCU or Flight Control Unit switch has five different positions, covering the functions as indicated in the menu. The Increase Decrease knob must change a variety of parameters, but which parameter it changes is based on the position of the FCU knob or switch. The Honeycomb Configurator has two menu options, Actions and Profiles. Let's take a quick look at Profiles. Right now there's only the default profile for the Throttle Quadrant. And this is one you don't want to overwrite and you don't want to delete. If you were to create additional profiles, they'd obviously show here. Let's load up this profile. The other menu option is Actions. You would create a new profile if you wanted to change any of the default settings. This covers both the yoke and the throttle quadrant, although I'm not sure if all the aspects of the yoke are fully implemented yet. One really important point to save you an awful lot of time and hassle is to copy from the default profile when creating a new one, and then change only those aspects that are important. It will save you a lot of time and trouble. You can also activate a current profile or delete a profile and you can change the selected device between the yoke 
and the Bravo throttle quadrant. Here I've selected the yoke, but it appears there's no access to the editing or configuration options at this point. Back to the throttle quadrant. Under the settings menu, there's a number of options. One, you can choose the language. You can import or export profiles that you may have saved on your hard drives at some point. Under the About menu, you get three options, and that is to go to the website, forum, or support. But bear in mind, these are Aerosoft and not directly to Honeycomb. And lastly, under Danger Zone, you can delete all profiles, as well as a number of resets. Again, a reminder, don't delete the default profile. Continuing with the menu, we can open the explain variable list, and we'll have a look at that just now in a little bit more detail. You can also download profiles and this will take you directly to the Aerosoft site where you can search for profiles for the particular plane that you're flying. Right now there's only profiles for the yoke available, there's nothing for the Bravo throttle quadrant. Okay, things are going to get a little bit heavy here and we're going to take a quick look at how these items are programmed within the Honeycomb Configurator. If you need to change anything, you'll need to understand the basics. But let me say at this juncture that things are already pre-configured more or less for the default and I was able to fly the 737 and the Cessna 172 without making any programming or configuration changes. For clarity it's also worth mentioning although all aspects of the throttle quadrant can be configured here in this application the more straightforward functions can of course be configured within X-Plane itself. And I found the best mix is the more complicated tasks being configured in the configurator and the simpler tasks I've left to explain. As already discussed, one of the more complicated aspects of configuration is the FCU knob in conjunction with the increase decrease selector. Let's choose increase and let's see what instructions or configurations are there. As we click on increase, we see the profile editor open up and we can see that the FCU selector has been selected and if it is on IAS, then it is to carry out a command. In this case, it's airspeed up. Likewise, if the FCU selector is on altitude, then the instruction is altitude up and so on. There's five positions for the switch and therefore five conditions. The FCU selector string is an internal application command but the variable is an X-Plane instruction. Sim, autopilot, airspeed up. If you're changing parameters, you'll need to know what instructions to use, and you can access those directly within the program. Let's have a look. Let's open the Actions menu and go down to the Open X-Plane variable list. Click on that and we'll be presented with two options, Data Ref and Commands. Commands are the explain instructions to carry out a specific task, and the data refs are those parameters applicable to certain commands, often a 1 and 0, or on and off. If we click on commands, for example, it will take us to the sim innovations list of explain commands, and here I'm doing a search for sim autopilot airspeed up, and there it is. This does mean you need to look up the various commands, but the search function is very good. Typing in airspeed up alone would give you the similar results. Looking at the data ref for example now, and putting in a more general search term such as gear, we can see the parameters for that instruction are 0.0, .0 through to 1.0. 0 being up and 1 being all the way fully down. And the reason I've used gear as an example, it will help understanding in terms of the programming for the LEDs. Let's look at that now. The LED mode is activated by clicking the switch at the top right. There is then a submenu to select the LEDs. And we see the LEDs are listed sequentially. And they're listed as LED 1, 2, 3, etc. And they're listed in the order that they were created in. By clicking on a particular LED, you will be able to ascertain what that function or what that LED does. The LEDs for the gears are controlled individually. Here, for example, we've got landing gear left red. The gear lights each have two colors, red and green, and also an off mode. Bearing in mind the data ref parameters we looked at, let's have a look at the conditions. And this condition has a value, and it basically says if it's less than one, then it's red. One being fully deployed. 
the red light also has a second condition and that second condition is if it's greater than zero zero being fully up so the red light will show if the gear is not fully up or not fully down which is correct by clicking on the various leds you can investigate and see examples of the various conditions and variables used to switch on and off the led lights the aerosoft employee who created this application known on youtube as mr jaranet has produced a video giving more details on how the programming actually works if you're interested in more of this detail i'll leave links to his video in the notes below the video actually covers parameters and programming related to prepared but he does say he's going to produce one for explain shortly but at last it's time to jump into explain When entering the joystick control tab, make sure that you're on the Bravo throttle quadrant and Laminar Research in typical style provides four separate views to assist us in terms of whatever configuration we're doing. Note these are views and not configurations. All the respective buttons etc. are labeled for clarity. Lockheed Martin, please take note. Unfortunately, to use the LEDs, you are going to have to create new profiles. You can do this by going through Manage Profiles and Create New Profile. This, in effect, will be copying the user profile that I'm in at the moment. I'm going to call it Default Honeycomb, and it's a backup for me, just in case the worst happens. And I accidentally overwrite it or corrupt the configuration in some way. Once I'm complete, Hit done and I'll make sure to choose that profile. Regardless of what view you're in, if you hover over one of the labels or numbers, it will indicate what the X-plane configuration for that particular action button or switch is. So the FCU switch indicates do nothing, but we know it's configured in the application. In terms of the gear down, for example, the LEDs as we saw are configured in the application, but the actual Gear up and gear down is configured in X-Plane. You'll find gear, flaps and axes best configured in X-Plane. Let's have a look at the axes and see what the default mappings are. Unsurprisingly, 2 throttle, 2 prop and 2 mixture. Also note that the range past the detent position or reverses are not mapped in the application. They can be, but not as default. To test my throttle quadrant and the LED lights, I want to create a new profile that's suitable for the 737, and this is going to do just fine. So principally, as I'm using the default LED mappings, all I need to do is map the axes. And it's at this point where I fall in love again with X-Plane. Against each axis, there is a small down arrow. For axis 1, I don't want throttle, I want it to be the speed brake. Click the down arrow and simply look for speed brake. It's that simple, quick and easy. Click on that, done. Before I go any further, I'm going to save this as a new and separate profile. As it's originally copied from the default honeycomb profile, it will carry all the LED mappings and other configurations along with it. So I've clicked on create new profile. I'll just give it a name and I'm going to call it commercial two engine and Boeing. And the reason I do that is that the Airbus would have a different configuration for the reverses. That's now complete. I'll hit done and we can continue with the configuration. For my 737, I don't need access number two. So I'm going to hit none on that. And I'm now going to set up throttle number one on axis three, throttle number two on axis four. I'm not going to use axis five and I'm going to put my flaps to axis six. I've also set up the reverses for my two engines on button seven and eight. This will toggle on and off the reverse thrust when using my reverse levers. Let's jump in and see if it's worked. I've configured the first two switches on my throttle quadrant to the anti-icing and just checking that it's working and it's showing on the overhead panel as well. Parking brake off, parking brake on and the light comes on. 
And now just a quick check to make sure the reverses are working as expected. And they come out of reverse the moment I push the handles forward. Brilliant. Now pressing the heading button and the light comes on. Just check that the FCU is on heading, which it is. And yes, I'm able to adjust the heading. I think we'll go for a heading of 220 degrees today. That's worked fine. So let's now go and change the altitude. Press the altitude button and just check that the FCU is on altitude. It is. And yes, we can adjust the altitude. That's working fine. The course button is set up to control the vertical speed. So we'll just press that. FCU is pointing correctly and I'm able to adjust the vertical speed. So I'm able to adjust the settings, but let's see if they actually work once the autopilot's engaged. Let's get off the ground. I have positive climb, so gear up. And I've got the red lights, which I expected to have, and they should stay red until the gear is fully stowed or retracted. I've hit the autopilot button so it's automatically changing on the heading and heading to 240 degrees. Flaps up now. My indicated airspeed or AIS button is set for auto throttle. I've got speed set at 145 but I'm doing nearly 220 and that's correct the throttles have pulled fully back so that's working fine. Now moving the FCU button to IAS indicated airspeed and yes I can adjust the speed that's working fine. The Boeing has now reached the speed and the throttle's now starting to kick in as it's on auto throttle to maintain 180 knots. Now choosing uh, the VS or vertical speed on the FCU and now turning the climb down to 500 feet and the aircraft reacts immediately. Let's be a little bit more realistic and turn up the speed and the auto throttle straight away kick in. I must say the honeycomb default profile is working absolutely perfectly at this stage. Whilst not shown here I have tried the nav function and that worked as well. These are the default drivers. I've changed nothing. Just reconfigured the axis in X-Plane Configurator. I've also set up a configuration for the 172. Levers are a little far apart, but it's just for demo purposes. Throttle and mixture working fine. Now putting the autopilot on, pressing the heading button now, and the aircraft should turn towards the heading bug, which it is. Let's just test some of the autopilot functions. First of all, ALT, and that's working. The Cessna should now hold the current altitude which it is, very good. I'm now pressing the start button with the engine running and I'm getting the starter engaged and low voltage indicator on the annunciator panel. Let's just check if some of the other functions on the autopilot are functioning. Nav and approach, that's working. Let's try now the back course, that's there as well. I'm now going to change the heading and see if the aircraft follows the new heading, which it is. It's following the heading bug. Yep, 
the low hydraulic pressure light on the annunciator panel is staying on and has since start up. That might need a tweak. And just checking the pitot heat to the switch that I've configured it to. All good. Well, I've got to say, I'm fairly impressed with how quick and easy it was to set up in X-Plane 11. For prepared users, time permitting, I'll follow this video up with one for prepared version 5, although I fear the setup is going to be a little bit more time consuming. If you'd like to know more about the Honeycomb Throttle Quadrant, I'll leave links in the notes below to the two videos. One is a general review of the Throttle Quadrant itself, and the second is setting reverse thrusters for airlines for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Take care of yourself, stay safe, and bye for now.